Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, we got some more fun today, so let's get started. Our statement reads, A. Find the magnetic field at the center of a square loop, which carries a steady current I. Let R be the distance from the center to the side. B. Find the field at the center of a regular insided polygon, carrying a steady current I. Again, let R be the distance from the center to any side. C. Check that your formula reduces to the field at the center of a circular loop in a limit that n goes to infinity. A quick look at the diagram. We have our square, and R is indeed from the center to the side, and we have the steady current I going around the loop. Um, a couple things to note on this diagram, though. Uh, we found in the text that we could find a line segment uh, field, and that would be the line segments occur at the corners. And if we split this up, we know that each corner of a square is 90 degrees. So theta, with respect to the center R as such, to the corners, would each be 45 degrees. So things that we should know for this question. Um, from the text, the field of a line segment is B equal uh, mu naught I over 4 pi S. Now, the mu naught here is the permittivity of free space, which is made to cancel the units appropriately. Um, so enough with the epsilon naught. Now we have to care about the mu naught. Um, and then that times sine theta 2 minus sine theta 1. And the field of a circular loop is B equal mu naught I over 2 times R squared over R squared plus C squared divided or 2 to the 3 halves power which should look familiar from the electric fields. All right, so to start our solution, the diagram suggests that uh, we use the results from the line segment. Again, the thetas uh, we defined a little earlier when we looked at the diagram, but when we bisect that 90 degree angle with the ray to the center, uh, the angle that it forms is 45 degrees, and therefore the other angle has to be the negative of that. Um, and then in this case, S is just equal to R since it's a distance from the center. And uh, we plug that into the form here. Uh, notice that we have to multiply by four since we have four line segments in a square. And that cancels the four in the denominator. Uh, we use the property here that sine function is odd. So the negative sign can't, uh, moves out front and cancels with the negative sign that's given. And thus, you see we have two copies of sine 45, so they combine down. And what is sine of 45 degrees but root 2 over 2? So the 2's cancel, thus leaving us with the field at the center equal to square root of 2 mu naught times i divided by pi r. Um, moving on to b, let's recall that on a straight line segment, the angles there for a straight line are just pi or 180 degrees. Then when we move to the square, it turned out to be uh, 90 degrees to form the square loop itself, but then we had to bisect it again to give us 45 degrees, which is equal to pi over 4. So if we generalize this to an inside polygon, that would take pi and divide it into n equal segments. Again, makes sense from a geometry point of view. Um, and then we would also have to multiply by n, again, keeping s equal to r, since we want the uh, distance from the center to the side. And so we see here, if we modify the line segment to the generalized case, we multiply by n, and then we have times mu naught i over 4 pi r, again, sine pi over n minus sine of negative pi over n, again, invoking the property of it being odd, the negatives cancel, and then we're left with two copies of sine pi over n. Um, so you see here that this uh, 2 here, cancels with the four in the denominator, thus leaving us with the magnetic field at the center equal to n mu naught i over two pi r times sine of pi over n. Now you might notice that that two pi r looks familiar to the circumference of a sphere, or a circle rather, and uh, we'll see in the next part why that comes to fruition. So if we take the limit of this to n equals infinity, that means that theta being the measure of uh, pi over n will be really small. This will allow us to invoke the small angle approximation for sine, which is sine theta is approximately equal to theta. 
If you look at the Taylor or McLaurin series of this and expand it, you will see that the higher power terms of a really small angle truncate to zero pretty fast with respect to the error. And uh, leaving us with just theta is the only thing that keeps its magnitude relative to the other terms. Uh, so that's why that small angle approximation works. We see it all the time in mechanics too, by the way. Anyways, applying this to this situation, we see that uh, that two sine of pi over n term uh, cancels down to just pi over n. And then we have the n's canceling and the pi's canceling thus leaving us with mu naught i over 2r. And if we look at the circular loop, this is the same thing given that z is in the same plane, not elevated. And so if we plug 0 in for z, this leads us to um, r squared in the denominator to the 3 fs power, which the, ha uh, the 2's cancel, leaving us with r cubed in the denominator, canceling with the uh, r squared in the numerator, thus leaving us with the exact copy we needed. Pretty cool.